Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And welcome to our programming course. And this first one's about conventions and data types. So it's kind of a theory lesson, uh, but let's get started here. Okay, so what is a convention? Well, you have to have certain ways of doing things, which is mainly in this uh, presentation all about how you name your components in a program. So like it's the same thing as driving in certain countries, you drive on a certain side of the road, like in Australia, where we are, it's driving on the left hand side and things work a whole lot better if you do it that way. Okay, so for naming objects and variables, we use this camel case formatting where we put the words without any spaces in between them when we're naming something, both our objects and our variables. Okay, now the reason we don't use spaces is because uh, if you've ever done HTML with spaces, you get these horrible kind of percent 40 um, symbols to uh, represent the space and it's just not a good thing. So when we name uh, things like here's some examples, something like tax rate is tax rate all one word you don't put the space in between so none of these have spaces in between uh, i sometimes kind of like to use these uh, ones with underscores in between it just makes it a little bit easier to read um, especially if you're using hungarian notation which we're going to talk about shortly uh, just on the camels actual real camels if you ever go to egypt um, have a camel ride at the pyramids uh, standing up on a camel like that is a pretty good trick uh, I don't know if I'd try that. And the funny thing is that at the end of the day, like in Giza, uh, all the guys who are doing camel rides out of the pyramids are actually riding their camels in town. So that's not a convention for the road here in Australia, but it's a regular convention in Giza uh, in Egypt that they do ride camels on the road. Anyway, back to the course. Uh, so there is Hungarian notation where you uh, indicate as part of the name of an object or a variable what kind of thing it is, okay? So if you've done Visual Basic program, when we have buttons, we put BTN cancel in front. So we don't just write cancel, we write BTN when we're in the program so that we know this is referring to the button. If we've got an error message popping up on the screen, we've formatted that by creating a label. So we put LBL in front of its name. And uh, these are Hungarian notation things which you have to do. Okay, it was invented by this guy, Charles Simonyi. And uh, yeah, he was a pretty interesting guy, did a few different things and uh, now worth $1 billion and he flew on a space shuttle. Wow, that's a good life. Okay, now for objects on forms, if you've done Visual Basic before, uh, you know, this thing like user ID here on the form, this is just a label, okay? So that would be called LBL user ID without that space in between so that we're using Hungarian plus camel case. This text box where they enter the username, that would have a TXT in front of its name. So it might be called TXT um, username so that we knew that that was coming out of the text box that was in the form when we're down inside the program actually processing it. Okay, so there's different types of data types. So before we can name data types, we need to know what all the different types are. So uh, there's a summary of what they are. And let's have a look in detail about what the data types are. So there's a big um, screenshot here of kind of a hierarchy network diagram type thing. Look, we're mainly going to be using string characters if we've sort of got letters and names and sentences. Boolean is used for true, false, yes, no, uh, named after a mathematician that invented it. Uh, integers are whole numbers. They can be positive or negative, and you can actually have long ones and short ones, which we'll talk about in a while. If you've got things which have decimals in them, like money, for example, has dollars and cents, well, then you need to use this float or double notation. Uh, so also for really super big numbers like the distance between uh, the Sun and Pluto or something like that in the universe, you need to use these sorts of things which can handle really big numbers. Okay, so let's look at integers, small versus long integers. Now, most times we can just use uh, the normal integer, the short one, because you've got a range there of negative 32,000 up to positive 32,000. And for most of our programs, that's going to be the range of whole numbers we use. But if you were doing things that are science, 
which were like the populations of countries which are in um, millions or billions, you're going to have to go bigger than 32,000. So for that, you might use the long integer format, okay? Because it uh, has a much bigger range, as you can see down here in this table. Okay, floating point data types. If you're doing um, whole numbers and you require fraction and decimal parts on the end of them, well, then you need to use either float, double or decimal. And those three things are different. In the Python language, we just have the float um, type. So you just set everything to float and that can handle decimals and that can handle money. Uh, but for Visual Basic and other languages, you might have double and decimal. Uh, now, the thing about decimal is it does take up more space, but it gives you really super accurate answers uh, when you're doing financial calculations, okay? Now, the extra space these days with the programs we're going to be writing isn't a big deal because processors are really fast. Your computer's got heaps of memory, uh, but for some application maybe where you're analyzing the last 50 years of stock data in the u.s stock exchange perhaps it'd be a problem if you use decimal rather than using double okay so look the data types of money and financial um, calculations when we're doing visual studio languages like visual basic c sharp c plus plus uh, look you can just use decimal or a currency data type okay so um, for Visual Basic, use decimal for money, and the basic rule is you can use double if you're measuring things, okay? Whereas in Python, it's a lot simpler. We just usually just use float as our data type. All right, text character and text uh, string data, okay? So when we've got words and we've got sentences and things that aren't numbers, basically, we use um, what's called string data. Now, think of it is when we make a sentence, we just string a bunch of words together, okay? Kind of like stringing together a bunch of lights on a string of Christmas tree lights. So that's why that you get the word string. It just means things have been joined together, okay? So it actually uses these ASCII characters to um, store those in the computer. So we've got a whole lot of ASCII characters here. So as well as actually storing... Um, letters and number values as strings, you can actually um, sort of detect and store whether someone's pressed a carriage return, like the enter key, or whether they've pressed the escape key and things like that using this ASCII code. Um, back in the day, in the really early days of computer, I remember my dad bought this printed out picture um, home from work of some movie star or something, which they'd done on the big new computer at his work because computers had just come in. Um, so they couldn't actually print photos on computers, so they'd convert them into actual um, ASCII characters and get a printout of it and get these sort of big um, printouts that you could, you know, put up on your wall like a poster. Like back in the day, it was a big thing. But if you want to check out ASCII art software, uh, there are some places there to do it. Okay, now you've got to be very careful with string versus numerical data type when you're storing and processing numbers. Okay, so we've got some Python code here. We're going to get into Python when we do our next presentation later on on algorithms and pseudocode. But look, in this first example here, we're getting the number entered and it's being entered as a string. So it's like entering letters. So if you enter the letter A and then enter the letter B, and if you do A plus B, it'll just join them up as A, B, okay? You've just joined two letters together to make A, B. If you join the letters C, the letter A, this letter T, it's gonna join up, you know, Letter 1 plus letter 2 plus letter 3 is C, A, T, cat. So if you um, enter the numbers or grab them out of a text box on a visual basic form and then add them together, like the numbers 2 and 4 are going to get added together to 2, 4. It's just going to put the two characters next to each other in a string. So I've got to be really careful about that. In the second example here, notice we're using our Hungarian notation in the front of the variable names here, int underscore. Um, now, you don't have to use underscore, I just like doing that to make it clear in my Python coding, but int, first number entered, um, notice how you've put int brackets input here. Putting that int brackets in Python 
tells Python that you want this entered as an integer whole number and stored like that, okay? So when you put the int brackets up front here when you're getting your input in Python, it'll store it as an integer number inside the computer. Then when you add the two things together, it's actually going to work the way you expect. And Python will know this is integer 2, this is integer 4. It'll add them together and get 6. Okay, so that is something to be really careful about um, with numbers, especially in Visual Basic. When you're grabbing them out of a text box, they might be text and they may not add together properly like correct arithmetic. Okay, Boolean values a true, false, yes, no data type. All right. Now, you only use this for true and false. So see down the very bottom of the screen here, we've got student.paidTuition equals false. Okay, that means they haven't paid their tuition. So that's like a Boolean variable you'd use to store that. Now, even though something might have two options, like the yes, no, true, false of an on-off switch, is, which is what computers use in binary, um, you cannot call those Boolean or refer to them as Boolean. So if some car is left-hand drive, um, or right-hand drive, okay, that is not Boolean. If something's measured in imperial, like inches and feet, rather than being in metric, centimeters and meters, that is not Boolean. Male and female is not Boolean. Rich or poor is not a Boolean variable. So watch out for those on exams, okay? Boolean can only be true, false, yes, no. That's its purpose, that's what it's used for. And it basically is like a binary, um, electrical on off. You've only got two conditions. It's yes or no. Okay, date and time data types. So there's a date type for storing dates and a time for type for storing time. Now, it's important to use those. You could put the date into a text field and have someone enter it as text, but you want it entered as date because then you can do date arithmetic. So you can calculate someone's age, for example, by working out today's date minus their um, birth date and dividing by 365. If we're trying to work out whether something's out of warranty now, we can check out today's date, take away the date they purchased the item. If that's bigger than 365, well, then it's past the 12 month warranty, unless of course it was a leap year and it's 366, but anyway, near enough. Um, yeah, actually read all the terms. That, oh, we'll just have a look at the meme here. Oh, yeah. By the time you read all those little things in the warranty, because I always have these little things and sometimes you find that, oh, it's not covered under warranty because, you know, I dropped it on the ground and it smashed or something like that. So now we're ready to actually do the naming conventions, having been through all the data types. So if something's Boolean with that Hungarian notation where you put a little thing in the front of the actual name of the variable, um, you need to use BLN. For currency, it's C-U-R, date time is DTM, integers int, and so on. Look, the ones we've um, circled here, they're the ones we're mainly going to be using. And there's a thing about global and local variables as well, which we'll talk about in another presentation. But if something's a string variable, it's a username, and you've set it global, so so that all the procedures and all sections of the program can access that variable. Well, then you are supposed to put a G in front of it as well to show that it is a global variable. Uh, now, there's a link there too to go to, uh, if you go to Microsoft, it's got all these strict standard conventions um, for naming items. And just to finish off, a little question for you which we've just lost. Um, how did we do that? All right, a quick recap on the whole presentation, kind of matrix style learning. Um, oh, my goodness. You know, everything was going so well right till the end and I'm not reshooting this. All right, so questions. All right, with this um, PowerPoint, um, we will put a PDF version of this um, in the description for the video because it's not really I don't think it's a lot of stuff that's copyright in it and uh, so it's for educational use so I don't think we're violating any copyright laws so um yeah we'll put a link to the pdf um, for this presentation uh, which you can get for free and just download uh, in the description okay so we have some more presentations on programming as we have time to make them so yeah let's get into programming it's a lot of fun and enjoy Subscribe to our channel. We update uh, every weekend.